excited for this one. This is the new and improved VinFast VF8. We've got it here in the VinFast Blue. And for those of you who don't know, this is actually my first EV. So VinFast has been kind enough to give me this car for the last two weeks. And as somebody who's coming from a truck, this has honestly been a dream to drive. So again, we're looking at it here in the VinFast Blue and looking at it from the front end, I really do enjoy how it is that they've constructed this car. I find a lot of EVs, when you look at them, they've got a front end that just screams that it's an electric vehicle. Whereas this one here still looks like the gas powered vehicles that we're used to. So it's got a nice semi-aggressive design with the way that the chrome comes down to this nice V right here, especially at night when this lights up and you see the headlights down here and the blinkers up top, I think everything comes together really nicely. So I was fortunate enough to get it in blue with the brown leather interior, and I think that looks pretty awesome. As for the rest of the vehicle, this is considered to be a mid-sized SUV. So if you're someone that has a family, you're gonna have more than enough space in the back for whatever it is that you need back there, whether it is kids and car seats or your golf bag, whatever have you, you've got more than enough space for that. So coming around to the back side of it now, looking at that design of the back, it's very similar to how they've got it done at the front here. So your brake lights are actually on this side here, but your daytime running lights and the lights that you'll see at night are actually this nice red strip that comes down to the V as well. And then you've got VinFast written out at the back. This happens to be the 8 Plus, which nets you uh, 402 horsepower. It's got an 87.7 kilowatt hour battery, and that's 425 kilometers of range. So pretty standard, pretty good in my opinion. One feature that you're gonna love, especially if you're a family person like myself, I've got a new family, so I've always got my newborn carrier in my right hand, groceries or whatever happens to be in the left hand. So you wanna get into the trunk. If you just swipe your foot under the little eye right here, do one of these, it should open up for you automatically just like that and as you can see there is a ton of trunk space in the back so again fitting strollers golf bags groceries duffels whatever it is that you need back here you've got a ton of space for it you've also got this little compartment here that lifts up spare tire as you would see in any standard vehicle so a lot of space for whatever you need to carry and then you've also got a power outlet just over here it's a 120 watt uh, 12 volt perfect for camping perfect for family trips um, anything like that. To close the hatch, you can either do the foot swipe again, or there's also two buttons here. So if you just press this button, everything's loaded up and you can go about your way and access first the back seat. So looking at the back seat of the vehicle, and this will be the first time that you get to see that nice uh, brown vegan leather. As I said, it does do a great job of accenting that blue. There's a ton of space in this vehicle. And as someone like myself, who is six foot three, again, just be cognizant of the fact that the driver's seat is also set to a person who is six foot three inches. So it's gonna look a little bit tight. And so here I am sitting comfortably, natural posture. Yes, my knees are touching the back of the driver's seat, but again, I'm a pretty tall person. Overall though, I have more than enough space. If the driver was someone that was average height, like a five foot 10, then I would have even more space. One thing before I forget though, to create a more comfortable experience in this back seat, there's a lever down here. You can either push the seat forward or recline it back for a more comfortable experience if you're going on a long road trip. All right, so this is a three seat rear seat. If you pull this center section down here, you've got a nice armrest, pretty comfortable. It's also got two cup holders just right here. So that's also pretty nice to see. Put those back. If I were to hop out of the car and pull that same lever that I just showed you, then all the seats would come forward to create a little bit of extra space. So if you're carrying, I don't know, a long piece of wood, or you just pick something up from Home Depot, a new TV, whatever have you, it creates that little bit of extra space in the back to move all of those things. Continuing with some of the features that the back passengers get. And we'll look at it again a little bit later. These seats are also heated and cooled at the back. So it's nice, everybody in the car gets to experience that nice seat warmer. And if it's a very hot day, you can cool the seats down as well. And then finally, looking at the back here, we've got the manual ventilation system. So I'm able to adjust everything as you would see in a standard car. But what's really cool back here is you've got two USB-A charging ports 
and a 90 watt USB-C fast charger. You don't really see that too often, so it's nice to have the ability to fast charge whatever your devices are back here. And if you don't wanna just use it for the back passengers, I tend to plug it in to charge up my iPhone. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention here that most people actually wouldn't consider unless you have a young family is, how well does a car seat actually fit in the back? I was super impressed to find out that the anchors were readily accessible and it made it super easy to install my car seat. All right, so let's talk about the driver experience. So again, being six foot three, um, there is actually a lot of space in this vehicle. Sometimes it does feel like it has more than my truck actually, which is kind of crazy. I know right now it kind of looks like there isn't because my knees are kind of touching everything. But if you use the controls on the back of the seat, there's the lumbar support. You can adjust the front and back. It also sits very deep if you needed it to, or you can raise the seat up pretty high. I'm someone that likes a lot of support under my uh, hamstrings because I do have abnormally long legs for whatever reason. So I kind of have it tilted up as you can see here. One really cool thing about any adjustments that you make in this vehicle, something that I wish I also had in my truck, is that the second you adjust anything, so if you watch this, I'll adjust the seat briefly. When I adjust the seat, you have this pop-up right here, new driver's seat position, save to your profile now. So anything that you change, any adjustment that you make for whatever reason, um, you'll have the ability to save that to your profile so that the next time you come and sit in the vehicle, it'll readjust itself to that exact position. So getting back to the overall experience of this seat here. So again, you have that nice uh, brown vegan leather, which I said looks really nice against the blue, but they also have the black accents here, which I do like. And you can see that it has the brown stitching to even accent it further. Everything in the front area does feel pretty nice still though it does look kind of basic kind of minimal um, i do find myself always looking for things when they don't exist here anymore the reason for that though is because of this nice big uh, display that you have here that controls literally everything in the car but we'll talk about that in just a second coming down here you've got your two cup holders i do wish that this wasn't glossy like the fingerprints on this is crazy i don't know if they made this matte or just a different color, whatever it might be, I feel like that would look a lot better than what we've got right now. In terms of the gear selectors, this part I do like. I don't know what you would name this system here, but it's hard to mess up, it's hard to miss. If you're one of those people, when you're pulling your gear shifter, you always end up in neutral for whatever reason. It's very difficult to do that by accident unless you are dyslexic. So very easy to be very intentional about what it is that you're choosing. Looking at the uh, door panels, you'll notice that again, the controls are very minimal. So all you have here are the four controls for the windows. If you wanna lock or unlock the doors, you might be wondering, cause there's nothing up here, very minimal. The button's just down here in that center console, which is next to the control for the infotainment system. As for the compartments, I do wish that there were a bit more. So you've got your standard left side well you've got this little compartment in the middle which just barely fits my sunglasses that i've got here and then you've got your glove box which manual a couple of receipts but as you can see here it is also very small i do wish that there was more spaces or places to put things and then before i forget again because we talked about the power in the back you've got a usb a charging port up here and then a data port here as well. So if you're gonna use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can do that. This does have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, so just keep that in mind. And then finally, this section right here is the perfect size to charge your phone wirelessly. So this is an iPhone 16 Pro Max. If I toss it down here, it just barely fits, but it is large enough that it'll charge your phone. Now, as for the actual driving experience and the controls of this vehicle, standard steering wheel, a couple cool things on this steering wheel. Uh, over here, you've got the standard cruise control. So you have all of your settings. You can adjust the speed that you're traveling at. You can also adjust the gap between yourself and the car that you're following. This here is lane assist. I personally don't like it. I feel like it's a little bit overpowering where it detects that you're outside of your lane and tries to overcorrect you back into it. So that's something that I typically don't use myself. On the left side of the steering wheel, this does a lot of things. So let's say, for example, I wanna adjust my side mirrors. Most cars have a little adjuster down here. On this, you have to actually go to the tablet, hit the side mirrors, and then choose left or right. And then once you've done that, you see that the controls appear on screen and I'm able to use these to affect 
the mirrors. So again, these have multi functionality. They do a lot of things, but it all depends on what you've actually got on the screen there. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the driving experience. Sorry, I'm just pulling out of my driveway. So it is a very nice drive. It's a very comfortable drive. Motorcycle just went by me right now. Um, as I said before, I do really like the sport mode, especially if I've got enough juice. That is typically how I'm traveling. I would say 95% of the time. Once things get low and a little bit dicey, then I'll jump into the eco mode, but I find I don't really spend much time on normal and I don't really spend much time on eco. It's always gonna be sport for me because you got that nice torque. So if I slam on the pedal right now, you'll see me kind of move back into my seat. You got that feeling. It's just so, so good. I don't know why you'd ever want anything but that. Um, another big thing is the regenerative braking. A lot of people talk about that in EVs pretty often as well. Um, I tend to either turn it off or have it on low because when you have the regenerative braking enabled, basically what it does is as soon as you take your foot off the go pedal, is it a gas pedal in an EV? I don't know. But as soon as you take your foot off the pedal, it kind of starts braking pretty aggressively for you because it's using that motion in order to recharge the battery a little bit. So if you have regenerative braking on high, then you're essentially just trying to maximize the total range of your battery. If you're someone that doesn't care about that, so you have a home charger or you're heading to a charge or just you're heading to an event point A to point B and you're not concerned about battery, then I would personally suggest just turning it off. But overall, very nice car very nice to drive everything feels good as six foot three it's a very comfortable drive if i wanted to change the position of anything i'm able to do that but i really don't have to change much and once i've got my driver profile set up i love that every time i jump in the car it moves the seat to exactly where i want it to be and i'm pretty much good to go so that is a major major plus with this car obviously a lot of other cars have it too but it's just something that I've never experienced before until driving the VFA. Continuing on with the steering wheel, again, something that I've not seen or experienced in any other vehicle is that it's got these sensors. So there's a sensor here on the left, a sensor on the right, and I believe that this is a sensor too. So while you're driving the vehicle, it's constantly watching your eyes, your head movement. It actually even detects yawning for example so if i'm driving the vehicle and i look down as people tend to do when they have their phone in their hands you'll actually get an alert on screen that tells you basically to pay attention to the road pretty cool features um they're not annoying features in that when it pops up it doesn't like force you to do anything so it doesn't say like you're texting and then force you to pull over for example or you're yawning and then shut the car off so you can't drive it anymore it's just kind of a gentle nudge that makes you consider things as you're driving the vehicle. Okay, so talking about the tablet and all the information that actually pops up on this guy here. So there's a lot of information at first glance and it can be overwhelming. First things first, just looking up at this area here, you'll realize that this kind of syncs up with the HUD or the heads up display as it's called. So this little well at the back of the dashboard right here actually projects an image on screen that's showing all of these things. So just by looking straight up while driving my vehicle, I don't have to look down at the screen at all because I can already see at first glance that I'm in park, that I've got 70% battery. If I was actually on a roadway right now, it would show what the speed limit is of this roadway among other information as well. All of your options to affect the car are pretty much on screen at all times. The main thing that you're probably gonna be looking at while driving this vehicle are twofold so you've got up here the battery so it says i've got 273 kilometers of range so if you actually click on the battery icon it'll bring you to this battery screen here so again 70 percent battery 273.5 kilometers of range and the temperature is 28 degrees celsius if you are a weirdo you can change the battery display to actually show you battery percentage up here instead of um, the kilometers left or your expected travel I don't know why you'd ever want to leave this up here because it's not a cell phone like you literally need to know how much range you've got left on the vehicle but if you're someone that likes that you can have it these are all the apps that come preloaded on the car people make jokes about this all the time because asphalt 9 is pretty cool baja big air i have no idea but nancy drew i, I don't know I don't know why that's on this. I don't know why that's a part of this vehicle. I think it's supposed to be like family specific. So maybe you've got kids in the back and while you're charging up, they want to play some Nancy Drew or Sugar Pop 
whatever that is. You've got the options there. If you wanna put some more apps on it, you can totally do that. The next section that you're gonna be using the most while driving this vehicle is the drive mode section. This here has been largely improved. A lot of the previous reviews that I've read and watched describe the fact that there only used to be two drive modes. So you had basically an eco and a normal, and the difference between the two was very negligible. So now you've got three modes, including a sport mode here. I personally always drive in sport mode because I just find that it handles the best. It just feels the smoothest and is the most fun to drive. If you wanna save charge and get the most range out of the vehicle, you can drive in eco. Eco usually turns on the regenerative braking and sets it to high so that whenever you're braking or slowing the car, it's actually using that to recharge the battery. And then one last thing that I realized I forgot to talk about was this section here, which is the sunroof. So you can see, if you look up, we've got this nice panoramic sunroof from front to back, and you are able to control that from the tablet. Sometimes I do wish there were uh, physical buttons somewhere around here that I could use just out of habit, I guess, or you know, one day if the tablet doesn't work properly and I wanna open this up, how would I do it? But very easy to use. You can just slide your finger to move the shade wherever you want it to and you'll see that this begins to adjust itself. If you wanted to open or close both of these at the same time, then you have that option on screen as well. So if I just hit open both, then it would do that. And the second any of these start working incorrectly, then you've got this calibrate button to recalibrate everything and make sure that they're synced up properly. And then you've also got the manual controls for both of them so that if you just want to gradually open it or incrementally open things, then you've got that on screen as well. One area that I would like to see some improvement in though is the cameras. While this thing does have a ton of cameras and the ability to use a 360 cam, which kind of patches all of those camera footages together, I just find that the resolution on those cameras is very low, especially with that rear view camera. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not the biggest deal, but it would be really nice to have a high definition camera back there because this was one of the things that I immediately noticed as I jumped into this vehicle for the first time. And as I was saying before, a really cool feature that I have enjoyed is the fact that you've got the heated and cooled seats for everybody in the car. In Toronto, the weather has been crazy recently, so you'll wake up and it'll be like two degrees with frost on the ground and you want your seat all warmed up. And then by the time you hit midday, you're taking layers off and you wanna be as cool as possible. So you're able to cool the seats for everybody except that middle person, unfortunately, but they can just feed off the two beside them. So that's pretty much it. It's been a dope two weeks with the VinFast VF8. As I've been saying this entire time, this is a great vehicle, not only for people who just want a nice EV, but if you're a family person as well, this car is gonna be fantastic for you, but don't take my word for it. You can hop on to vinfastauto.ca to book a test drive for yourself. So that's pretty much it for me. Much love as always, throwing up two of them. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.